Hi, I'm Jeffrey Stuffings from Jester King Brewery, and I'm here to give you your craft beer and brewing tip of the week. So for our water here at Jester King, and this is going back to kind of that philosophy of, of achieving a sense of place in beer, our water is basically not manipulated at all. I mean, we, we, we test it to make sure it's it's pure and it satisfies, you know, our commission, state commission on environmental quality. So it's not just we're being totally random with it, but we are on a well. The well draws from what's called the Trinity Aquifer. It's the water source for most of the, what's called the Texas Hill Country. We are basically on a giant limestone rock called the Edwards Plateau here at Jester King. And when it rains, the water goes through about you know, 18 inches of topsoil, and then it has to percolate through almost a thousand feet of solid limestone or sheeting of limestone before you get to the aquifer. And when the water percolates through that, that rock, it picks up minerality. And so our water is remarkably hard here at Jester King. Total dissolved solids, we're talking somewhere between you know, 750 to 1,000 parts per million. Basically way harder than you know, any brewing book I've ever read says to go with as far as brewing water. That really spooked me initially. And for the first roughly two years of brewing here, we softened our water by blending in somewhere between 50% to 25% uh, reverse osmosis water. Ultimately, just by kind of, you know, inching along and being like a little less trepidatious to kind of go further and farther down the path of 100% well water, we finally got there. I think one day we were just like, you know, hey, for this batch, let's do 100% well water and see what happens. And we were really happy with the results and felt that kind of the, the minerality and kind of that aquifer, that limestone character in the beer was the most vibrant it had ever been. And, and from that point on, we've just really been kind of sold on the idea of using this kind of really rich, hard water. It can have its limitations. Some people just flat out don't like the character from it. And, you know, we've gotten plenty of comments throughout the years of, you know, just not liking really the, the minerality in our beers, of it coming off as like, you know, too, too well, essentially like just too much. But we've always been fans of it, and thankfully, from a commercial perspective, enough folks you know, have liked it as well. It can make you know, hop bills a little bit more tricky. You know, kind of the quantities and amounts of hops we use and the temperatures at which we add hops can be a little bit more difficult to not have the beer come off as kind of too bitter or too astringent. We like bitter. Bitter is not a negative word for, for certainly us, but also I would argue for farmhouse ales in general. So, you know, I think if you're trying to just make like the new or hazy or modern or whatever you want to, you know, phrase it as IPA, this is not the water for you. But for making, you know, rustic farmhouse ales where bitterness in the beer is something not to be shied away from, but something that is celebrated and lends to the overall drinkability of it, keep in mind, again, these are beers that where you literally can drink a liter two liters of in a setting and still be enjoying it and still have that drinkability not you know, dissipate, I think you know, having that nice firm bitterness is important. You know, we were concerned about you know, the beer being kind of like, over, from a hot perspective, kind of overly bitter from having water that's quite as hard as, as we have here, but just through practical trial and error, it's really kind of alleviated our fears. And as a starting place, and I've heard this before from other you know, professional and home brewers, you know, if you like the character of your, your water, uh, if it's good to drink, then by all means brew with it. I mean, we have, uh, we still to this day have a RO system here at Jester King. The, the RO water just tastes like, it doesn't have much life or character or vibrancy to it. It's just kind of boring where you drink our well water and it's almost like, you can almost like approach it from a culinary perspective where you can kind of pick out like flavor notes in it where it's just kind of like fun to drink and pick apart something as simple as water. I mean, when it comes to farmhouse brewing, keep in mind that farmhouse brewers historically, you know, were home brewers essentially. And so kind of going with ever kind of what, what, are, what you have locally and what works for you and provided it makes beer that you know, passes the palate test on uh, you know, the back end, you know, that's, that's perfectly fine. I mean, there are no hard and fast rules per se when it comes to farmhouse brewing, which, which lends to a lot of creativity. I think there's some constructs you should really stay within, 
But within that, it's, it's a rather large uh, space to, to play. You know, if you're on city water, you know, I'd consider maybe adding some salts. I mean, there's, there's, you can do like craft custom water and still have it be quote like farmhouse. You know, I would take kind of, I would start with like the water profiles that's in Markowski's farmhouse ales book. He goes into that really well in his book and kind of use that as a jumping off place. And I would encourage you maybe not to soften from there, but to actually kind of build up and kind of to your palate with the finished beer that you're seeing, kind of say like, do I like kind of the hop to malt balance and do I like kind of the water flavor minerality from that and kind of keep pushing up from there. I mean, I think Jester King's an example that it's hard to really push too far given just how hard our water is. And for more on brewing rustic farmhouse and table beers, please click on the link below.